What's up everyone, it's Adam from Life of Adam and today I have a brand new lifeguarding video for you guys. If you guys are new to the channel, make a bunch of lifeguarding content about how to pass the course, how to be a successful lifeguard, basically everything you guys need to know about lifeguarding. So definitely consider subscribing and liking the video if you're new to the channel. Now around 92% of you watch my videos are not subscribed so it would mean a lot if you guys would hit the subscribe button to help grow my channel so that people can become lifeguards and see these tip videos so today i'm going to be talking about some game changing secrets when it comes to the pretest. now the pretest does a pretty good job of determining if you're a good enough swimmer or not it's not something that you can kind of finesse in order to become a lifeguard like a 300 meter swim you have to be a very good swimmer to do that especially without stopping and touching the wall or taking breaks so it's not like you can find a loophole to become a lifeguard these are just some tips and some secrets that you guys can implement when doing the pretest to help you guys become a lifeguard and to pass the course. Now, if you haven't already, I made tip videos specifically about the brick dive, the 300 meter swim, and the treading water. So I have an individual for each of the three parts of the pretest. I highly recommend you check out those videos. They're on my playlist on my channel. And just to get some general advice about what strokes to swim, the timing, tips for treading, tips for seeing the brick and how to bring it back in time, like stuff like that. So you should check those videos out just to get that general understanding. Now, if you combine those videos and what I say in those videos with this video, there's, you're gonna pass 100% if you're a good swimmer. Now, starting off with the 300 meter swim, a lot of people are worried because they're not sure if they'll have enough endurance and stamina to do it. They don't know which strokes to swim and they're just uncomfortable in terms of like swimming under pressure because they're nervous and it's okay to be nervous. A lot of people are nervous for lifeguarding courses. Now you can't stop and touch the sidewall to take a break because you're automatically eliminated. Like you cannot pass the pretest if you do that. And you can't stop on the end walls and take like a 10 second break. You can grab the wall, take a breather, and then swim the other way, but you can't like hang out there for like five seconds because the people will notice that you're not doing consecutive laps and they're gonna notice that you're not that good of a swimmer because they're constantly waiting at the wall to catch your breath. Now this is super important. When you're doing the lap swimming, the best time to take a break is when you're turning around and you're pushing off the wall. You do not need to do flip turns or anything crazy like swim teams would do, but when you're pushing off the wall, glide for as long as possible because you're using momentum, you're pushing off and you have like three to four seconds of you just gliding, take advantage of that to catch your breath because you're gonna burn a lot more energy if every single turn you don't push off the wall and you just start swimming because that's actually a significant amount of space that you're pushing off of. That's a long distance. And if you add it up for all the times that you turn around, let's say you do 12 laps, right? If you, you do it, you turn around like 24 times. And if you take the gliding distance, that is a lot of meters that you're just gliding. You're not even putting a lot of energy. So take advantage of pushing off the wall, gliding and like relaxing your body as you do that and then obviously you start swimming again now in terms of the treading water portion this is a little bit more tricky because i can't give you tips of how to tread water with no hands because you're in the middle of the pool you can't grab the wall you can't push off the floor so the main secret for you guys is to keep your legs bent and act like you're sitting in a chair if you keep your legs straight and you start flutter kicking you're more likely to get tired very quickly. It requires more consecutive kicks. You can get foot cramps, which are extremely uncomfortable. And I guarantee you, if you get a foot cramp, it's gonna be brutal. So you do not wanna do flutter kicks. You wanna do circles with your legs and you wanna sit in kind of like a chair. The more you like sitting in a chair, the easier it is to float. You can't lean back and like lay on your back because that's cheating, but you can lean back a little bit. Like I'm telling a little bit, they'll catch you if you go way back. But if you sit in the chair and lean back a little bit, it'll be easier for you to float. You can just make circles with your legs and you can keep your hands above the water now it might need some practice you might have to do this before the actual pretest this is a really important secret for you guys because the people that fail are the ones that keep their legs straight and flutter kick and they just run out of energy now lastly for the brick dive my secret for you guys it's all about location and finding it with your eyes once you find the brick it is very important that you swim above it and go straight down. I would not recommend going underwater without knowing where the brick is. It could be on the black lines on the bottom of the pool. It could be in the corner. You have to locate it before you submerge because if you're looking underwater with your eyes open and you can't find it and you have to pop back up, it's not a good look. But the first secret I have for you guys is find it, swim directly above it and go down. You don't have to go super fast when you're swimming over. You can do a really good pace. You could do brush strokes, so it's easier for you to look because your head's above water for longer instead of turning side to side when you do front crawl. Another secret for you guys is when you get the brick on the bottom, they say you cannot push off the floor, but I'm telling you guys, you can get away with it. Instructors can't see you 12 feet underneath. If you do a little bit of a push up to help you get up and kind of get the momentum going and to hold the weight 
I highly recommend it. That's what I did. That's what a lot of people do, especially the people who are subscribed to the channel and already passed the pretest and used my advice. They all did that and they were all very successful. Don't make it super obvious, like you're doing a complete squat and you're blasting off the bottom, but a little push off can make a huge difference because starting to swim from the bottom without any momentum, it's pretty tough, like even for me, or even for someone who's in really good shape. So, so those are some pretest secrets that you guys can implement and hopefully you guys will pass. Definitely check out my videos where I go over each individual pretest because those are very helpful. And I guarantee you guys, if you incorporate everything that I'm talking about in these videos, you will be a successful lifeguard. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely like and subscribe if you're new to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out.